Hi everyone, my name is Karen. This is my channel Rather Be Reading and today I'm bringing to you my May and June book haul. Hi guys, it is time to play catch up on some book hauls. So you may have noticed in my last video that I said that I was going to be filming more videos that night, um, but we literally lost the light. And so luckily for me, lucky we've been sent into lockdown where I live uh, we're having a COVID outbreak at the moment um, and we've been sent into lockdown and one of the upsides to being sent into lockdown is that I'm now home during the day and so can film on my lunch break which is what we're doing today so I was worried that we weren't going to get this video up to you in time but you know the universe provides um so we've got May and June to talk about. We may have some birthday books sprinkled in here, but we'll get to that in due course. Um, we will, as always, start off with the library books. Now, I'm going to be perfectly honest. I wasn't keeping my piles as strictly as I normally do, so I'm not 100% sure that a couple of the later books in this pile weren't maybe gotten at the beginning of July, but I'm pretty sure this is all the library books that I collected um, or picked up in the months of May and June. So let's talk about them. So the very first book that I have here is I Know Everything by Matthew Farrell. This is the second book in a series. I read the first book, which was called, I think, what's it called? Yeah, What Have You Done? They're supposed to be in a series, but I'm not really sure how. The series is called like the Adler something series. Um, and there's a character in this with the surname Adler. So I get why this is, but I don't know how it links to the first book. Because as far as I can tell, I'm not sure who the crossover characters are. But this is the next book that I have to read. I'm reading this series because I got approved for like the fourth book on Neck Alley. And so I want to read the first books first before I get to that. This is crime fiction. This one appe appears to follow a police investigator who there was a car accident, but it's then revealed that there was some kind of foul play. And that the woman who died in the car accident was a wealthy, um, sorry, she was the wife of like a wealthy psychiatrist. And so he becomes the prime suspect, but we're then also following his perspective and he knows that he didn't kill his wife, but he's got like dark shady past and it's following that story. So I got that. And then I'm not going to lie to you guys. I completely forgot that I picked this book up until I was doing this because I really should have returned to this already because that is Dragon Keeper by Robin Hobb. So my, I have been listening to the Realm of the Elderlings, all of the books in her multiple series that make up Realm of the Elderlings on my um, library's Libby app um, on audio. Um, and But for some reason, really annoying reason, my library doesn't have books one and two in the <clears throat> Rainwilder Chronicles. Um, and so I thought I was going to have to pick up the first two and read them physically, which is a little sad about only because I have been listening to that entire uh, Realm of the Elderlings all on audio. But then luckily for me, my friend uh, Mel came in clutch. Um, she lives in Canada and she let me sign into her library th um, through Libby and they did have the first two books. So I ended up listening to those um, on uh, audio. So I don't need this. I should have returned this because I've in fact already read this book um, on audio. I then picked up Look Alive 25 by Janet Ivanovich. This is the 25th book in the Stephanie Plum series. I've talked about this so many times. Chicklet, Inept Bounty Hunter, book 25. I then picked up Hollow Pike by Please Ignore This Here. Um, this is a um, trans author. Um, it is Juno Dawson. Um, and this is her debut novel, I believe. I could be wrong on that, but I think this is her debut novel. Um, and this, I don't really know what it's about. I think it's got, yeah, where witchcraft never sleeps. I was going to say, I think it's got something to do with like witchy vibes. Someone who's dreaming about being murdered. I have um very interested in all of Juno Dawson's books, so I'm really looking forward to um picking this one up. It's been on my so this is one of the books I need to read for one of my goals is like books that I marked as to read about a million years ago. So excited to get to this. I then picked up Party Games by R. L. Stein. This is the first book in like the revamp of the Fear Street series. Um, and so I don't know what this is about, I just know it's the first book in the revamp. So I wanted to give this a go um and see how, like, you know, what's changed with the kind of modern publications of these books is this more than one book in here I just realized it's got like no it's part two okay part three so they're obviously significantly longer than what the old um Fear Street novels used to be but I'm looking forward to this and seeing kind of how the series has progressed over time I then picked up The Labors of Hercules by Agatha Christie this is the next book in the Hercule Poirot series that I need to read um I'm assuming 
that Hercules might be the dog. I um, mean, I'm excited that this involves a dog, but this is just the next one in that series that I need to read. I then, another one for one of my goals that I picked up is The Colour of Tea by Hannah Tunnicliffe. The um, like tagline on here is a luscious novel of longing, passion, and afternoon tea. I have no idea what this is about. It's clearly women's fiction. Um, oh, I thought this was an Australian author, but it says on here, born in New Zealand. So that's even better because there's very few, I find it very hard to find New Zealand authors, but I think maybe she grew up in Australia. Oh, after she finished university, she lived in Australia, but also in England and also in Macau, which is where I believe this is set, which is, I believe, a part of China. If I'm wrong, that's going to be really embarrassing, but I believe um, that is where this is. Um, and I don't know what it's really about, except that it's apparently longing, passion, and afternoon tea. So we'll find out. I then picked up Dark Sacred Night by Michael Connolly. This is the next book by Michael Connolly. As you guys know, I'm basically reading every book by Michael Connolly in publication order because all of his books cross over. This is the second book in the Ballard series. <clears throat> Um, but this one is a direct crossover between um, Ballard and Bosch. Um, Renee Ballard is a female detective and Harry Bosch is our um, older police homicide detective. So looking forward to um, reading this one and seeing them cross over. Um, and then the next two, the final two that I picked up are another two that I need to read for goals this year. The first one is Elsewhere by Gabrielle Zevin. Um, I believe this is about a girl who dies and I think we're following her yeah like in elsewhere like whatever that is but I don't know exactly what the plot is but I've got that um I then have Liars Inc by Paula Stokes this one is about a boy who starts um a kind of like business in his school whereby it's basically like a forgery business he basically for money will give students like forged permission notes from their parents and all of that type of thing um and his he starts the business with two of his friends and then one of his friends asks him to forge a note for them and he does it but then the friend doesn't come back from wherever they were going and I believe then the um friend's body is found the friend has been murdered and I think then our main character is a suspect um don't know too much about it apart from that but that is the last one that I picked up from the library during this period let's move this pile out of the way because it's in frame and it's ugly okay those are the library books. Let's move on to ebooks. So I've got, I'll go through May ebooks first and then I'll go through June ebooks. So in terms of ebooks purchased in May, I purchased just two. The first of those was Heartbones by Colleen Hoover. Um, you guys know I kind of have a goal to read all of Colleen Hoover eventually. I've read very little by her so far, but I do own a ton of her. Um, and this one was on sale for $1.49. It's YA, um, which is interesting because the only Colleen Hoover I've read by her so far is YA and I haven't enjoyed it but this is her going back to YA because most of her stuff is more adult or new adult um and this one is about I think about a girl whose mother dies and she has to move in with her father don't know too much about it apart from that that is what that's about <clears throat> and then also have The Life She Was Given by Ellen Marie Wiseman um this one I also saw on sale and um was a book that I marked as to read like a really long time ago this one has a dual timeline, but I know that at least one of the timelines is set in the 1930s and it's about a girl who was sold by her mother, I think, to the circus. Um, that's all I really know about that one. I then I think have five neck alley approvals that I was approved for in the month of May. The first of those is The Dangers of an Ordinary Night by Lynn Reeves. This one has a publication date of the 9th of November. This one is about um, two girls go missing and then one of them is found dead, one of them is found really disorientated um, but it's told from the three different perspectives the mother of the girl the police detectives who are investigating what happened and the therapist who is like helping the girl who survived so very interested in that um the second one I have is The Housemaid by Sarah A. Denzel this one has a publication date of the 20th of July which was in fact I was gonna say was that yesterday but no I think that was today today the 20th or the 21st I don't know we're in lockdown who knows what the day is it was either year today or yesterday. Um, this one is about a woman who becomes a live-in maid for someone, but it's like got a creepy housekeeper. I think the son of the family is like a kind of a bad boy vibes. Um, but then also it's got an element of that. I think she's given, there's like a dollhouse in the house. Um, and there's a miniature doll of her in it. Like that doll in the like dollhouse has been like murdered or something. It all sounds very creepy. Um, and I'm interested in it. Um, and I like Sarah A. Denzel as an author. 
Um, the next one I was approved for is The Hawthorne School by Sylvie Perry. This one has a publication date of the 7th of December. Um, this one is about a woman who, her son is like, she's got, he's four and he's like quite difficult. And she gets an opportunity um, to put him into this like kind of um, atypical school. Like it's not your usual school. It's, got, it's kind of different. And um, she, I think she's employed by the school. And then so her son can be um, a like she cleans for the school or something so her son can be a student there um and it really works her son is greatly changed but he becomes very subdued um and that's what i really know about it i'm not sure if this has, like got some cult vibes i'm interested to find out the next one i have is one good lie by jane isaac this one had a publication date of the 24th of june um this one is about um two sisters and their mother is murdered and the sisters feel really guilty because I believe that the person who is the murderer, who they believe to have murdered her, is I think the sister's boyfriend. Um, but like they're not sure. I think they kind of suspect. And then I think another woman is murdered. I don't know. It all sounded very murdery and intriguing. And then the final one that I was approved for in um, May is The Perfect Family by Robin Harding. This one has a publication date of the 28th of July. Um, and this one is about a family who it's like, they're all starting to be pranked. Like lots of pranks are being played on the family. And then the pranks slowly start to escalate and get more and more like malicious and menacing. Um, but each, everyone in the family is keeping secrets. They all think that they're like pranks are being aimed at them because of different secrets that they have. Um, and so I have that one. So that was everything for May. Then moving on to June, I have to flip to a different page in my notebook. So in terms of eBooks purchased, I purchased three eBooks in June. The first was The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. This one was on sale for $2.69 um, and is a really recent publication that has been very popular. And I, for some reason, was like weirdly like reluctant to read this book because I don't know, and I don't know why, because it speaks to me in a really particular way. So this one is about a woman who I believe tries to take her own life and she ends up in kind of this like limbo step place where she can go back and look at different periods in her life where she made decisions and see like what would have happened if she made the opposite path and this is like a weird thing for me because when I was a teenager like in my early 20s there was a tv show and I can't remember what it was called but with this almost exact premise and I used to think like I'm so fascinated by this premise that for me, this is kind of what I do imagine the afterlife to be like for a really good period of my life. I thought this is what I hope it is like when you die, that I can go back and look at my life and think what would have happened just out of interest? Like what would have happened if I chose this different path? I just find that such a fascinating concept. And it, to the point where it feels like Matt Haig literally like, not as a story, because I didn't think of it as a story, but literally like plucked this out of my brain. Not that I think this is like such a unique, you know, premise or idea, but I don't know, just... I felt a little bit weird about it. Um, and then the next book that I purchased is Every Vow You Break by Peter Swanson. This one was also on sale and it's Peter Swanson's most recent publication. I don't actually even know what this one's about, um, but it was on sale for $2.19. It's actually had very positive reviews. I really enjoy Peter Swanson. I've read his first three published works and I think I own all of the rest of his. So he's definitely an author that I'm going to continue on with and glad to have picked up his most recent and then the final book that I purchased was The Companion by Kim Taylor Blackmore. I saw this one on sale and recognized it as a book that, again, I marked as to read like a really long time ago. This one is about a woman who is about to hang for murder. It's set in like 1855. She's like imminently about to hang for murder. And it's about her reflecting back on her life and what happened and like how she ended up here. Um, and like I said, I marked it as um, to read a really long time ago and saw it on sale, so I nabbed it. And then in terms of neck alley approvals in June, you guys, I was only approved for one book in June, which I feel like is a real accomplishment because you guys know I've been really out of control um, with my neck alley approvals. So the only book that I was approved for in June is The Jane Austen Investigates The Burglar's Ball by Julia Golding. So this is the sequel. I was approved for the first book, um, which is the Abbey Mystery um, on Neck Alley. And it's actually on my TBR for this month. And I saw the second book. And even though I haven't read the first one, I was like, oh, the second one's on there. I want to get that too. Because this is a middle grade series with a young Jane Austen, like solving crimes. That's all I can tell you about it. But I'm excited to have it. So that's eBooks. So now it's time to move on to the physical books that I acquired in the month of May and June. So in fact, though, in May, I didn't acquire any books. I had no physical books come into my possession in May. But in June, it was my birthday month. So I, I placed a pretty big 
birthday book order online um, in June. Um, I hadn't placed a single online, doesn't mean I wasn't buying books, but I didn't place a single online book order since January. So I kind of splurged, decided to spend a bit of money, um, but I did also, quite a few of these are books that I've already read that I didn't own a physical copy of and I wanted to like add to my collection. So even though I've like got quite a lot of books, not all of them are adding to my TBR, so that's something at least. And only half, more maybe, only a portion of the books that I ordered is in this haul, the rest of them didn't come until the beginning of July, so they will be in my July book haul. But I will take you through the ones that have arrived already. So the first of those is The Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie. This is one I have read. So I decided that, like, while it would be lovely to own the entire collection of Agatha Christie's books, it's just probably not feasible because she's written, like, a bazillion books. So I just decided that I would like to have copies of my favourites. And I think that Death on the Nile is, in fact, my favourite of hers. I was very excited when I saw that this was going to be the next movie like that they made and I'm excited to see that movie. Um, so yeah, I picked up this one. My cats are going wild, you guys. I then saw, um, grabbed First We Were Four by Alexandra Sirui. So this is um, the only book by Alexandra Sirui that I didn't own. Um, and this has been on my wish list for like a really, really, really long time, but it's always really expensive. But I decided to splurge because it was my birthday. And I did pick up quite a few books in this order that have been on my wish list for a really long time. Um, and this was one of them. Giles, you got to knock the camera over. <laughs> Giles is trying to make an appearance. He makes a very rare appearance on the channel. It's normally Winnie who's getting all up in my grill while I'm trying to film, but Giles wants to be a part of the action. No, you're going to knock the camera. Uh, just a second. Here he is. Say hi. Want to say hi to everyone? No, he just wants to get down. Sorry about that, you guys. The next one I picked up is another Agatha Christie one that I wanted to own, which is The Murder of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie. Again, just another one of my favorites um, of hers that I've read. Oh my God, the cat hair flying around everywhere now. The next one is another book that I've read but wanted to add to my collection, and that is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. Loved this when I read it. This is a new adult male-male romance. Apologies. This is a young, a new adult male male romance. Um, and again, this has been on my wish list because as soon as I read this, I wanted to own a copy. But this is always really expensive. But again, splurge for my birthday. I then picked up Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This was an incredibly popular release last year, and I've been really, really, really wanting to read it. This is like gothic horror, which I love. It's set in 1950s Mexico. I'm really excited to have my hands on this. There is so much cat hair flying around. Um, I then picked up Check, Please, um, book two. So this is um, a bind up of years three and year four. Um, so this is a, um, was originally a web comic. Um, it follows um, a character named, is it Biddy? Now I'm like doubting myself as what his name is. Eric Biddle? Yeah, I think he's called Biddy. Um, who is a, it's set in Canada. He plays hockey. I think it's in Canada. He plays hockey um, on his like college sports team. Um, he is gay. He likes to bake, but he plays hockey. Um, and I have read years one through three online through the webcomic. And I own the bind up of years one and two. But this is the bind up of years three and four. So I'm excited to have this so I can finally read year four and finish off this webcomic. And then the next one I have is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Um, again, I have read this, but I wanted this in the edition. I recently got a copy um, in, I think it was in my January order, I got a copy of The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. Um, in this matching edition, I will also be buying it, the Wuthering Heights one, even though I don't love Wuther Wuthering Heights, but I want to have all three of these editions because I just think that they are gorgeous. This is such a like fat little chunky book. I love it. And then the final book that I picked up in uh, that arrived in June at least is the Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This is the first book in the trilogy. Um, I can't, off the top of my head, I'm forgetting what the trilogy is called. It's the Winter Winter Night trilogy. Um, deals kind of with Russian folklore. I don't know too much about it. I try to always glaze over when people talk about the synopsis of this because I don't want to know too, too much um, about this. But I'm really excited to read um, this trilogy. Again, this has been on my wish list for a while. So glad to at least have the first book. I will obviously need to continue purchasing these so that I can get the sequels so I have the whole thing. But I'm excited to have uh, my hands on this first book. That is it. That is everything that I acquired in the months of May and June. 
I would love to chat with you guys in the comments down below if you've read any of these books, if you've got any thoughts on them, or if you want to chat to me about what you guys have been picking up over the last couple of months. I would love to know. Um, again, stay tuned for my um, July book haul because I will have a few more birthday books um, the second half of that order um, in that video. Um, but yeah, I'd love to chat with you guys in the comments down below. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more of my channel. That is all I have for this video today. Bye, guys.